I am so excited to be able to bring you my flawless foundation routine that I've been doing lately. It is a routine that lets your own skin show through, but you are able to cover all of your flaws. Please keep in mind that this is not a five minute routine. It is one that does take a little bit of extra time, but if I am doing my makeup, I know which steps I'm going to next. I can usually do my foundation, concealer, all of my cheek products, powder, all lipstick, everything. I can usually do that in approximately 10 to 15 minutes. It does take me another 10 to 15 minutes to get this intricate of an eye look, just so you know. So I'm talking that on a normal day, I normally do my makeup and it's gonna be 30 to 40 minutes to do my makeup. Yes, I know that does sound like a long time for most of you guys, but again, this is what kind of is like my creative outlet. It's obviously my job, it's what I like to do for a living, and it's obviously something that brings me a lot of joy, so I kind of relish in doing the makeup every day. I am using the number seven per Protect and Perfect Advanced All-in-One Foundation. This is uh, pretty much a dupe for the It CC Cream that everybody loves, but I really like it. It does have the sunscreen like the other one does. This is an SPF of 50 plus, just like the original It uh, CC cream, but this is flawless foundation for a woman that is mature over 50 years old and beyond And it seems to work really good because it still lets me have all of my skin show through It still looks like skin, but it looks very finished and very dewy and glowy So I hope that you do enjoy this Please give it a thumbs up and let's get into the tutorial right now for you guys Okay, so first thing we're going to do is always makeup prep steps and when I talk about that, I'm talking about making sure that everything is prepped the way you need it to on your face before you ever go in with foundation. And for me, that is really important. Now, one of the things that I have found because I use such an extreme amount of moisturizer on my face uh, because I have such dry skin is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rub every last bit of it in with my fingers right before I get started. And then I'm gonna take a tissue. I'm just gonna uh, blot everywhere all over my face to get any excess oils, any excess, um, you know, of that moisturizer, that SPF that's just kind of sitting on the top, but it hasn't sunk in yet. So you really wanna let your SPF set in for at least about five or 10 minutes before you do that. So do your morning skincare, put that SPF on, let that all soak in, and then if there's any breakthrough anywhere that you notice, that you can't rub in with your fingers, then go ahead and blot just a little bit. All right, next I'm gonna put on my Catrice Under Eye Primer, and this is just a moisturizing under eye primer that I love a lot. It just gives that little added boost of plump up effect underneath my eyes that I need, and that seems to sink in really quickly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go in with my e.l.f. Putty Primer. So I'm going and I'm pressing this into the places where my pores are the worst, which is across my nose and across my cheeks, up here into the forehead area. I really have a lot of yucky pores in there. And then my chin. And I really make sure that I'm pressing that in and making sure that it really gets those pores blurred out. That's what primer is for most of the time, is to create a barrier between your skin or your moisturizer and your foundation. So that's what I'm doing. And then I do put a little bit down here on my neck and my decollete, not a lot. And I also go ahead and I do it up around my eyes here just a little bit, not all the way up, but that does help to create a barrier between that moisture from the Catrice under eye primer that I just put on and the concealer that I'm gonna put on here in a second. And then the next step I do is I go in with my color corrector. If you don't need a color corrector, if you don't have super dark circles, don't worry about this part. This is just a part that I do because I absolutely have really dark circles and they don't get covered with regular concealers. So I just put a line right here. My circles aren't as bad as they used to be, but they're definitely still there. So I just put a line right there and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tap that in. And then the next prep step, again, if you have really good skin, you might not need to do this. But for me, it's essential because if I want my foundation to look natural at my age, 
I don't want to cake my foundation on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some sort of, whether you need a little bit more yellow, if you have yellow tone, or whether you need a little bit more pink, if you have pink tone. Mine is the e.l.f. Camel Concealer. I'm going to take just a little bit of concealer, and I'm going to go around those spots on my face where I feel like I have extra problems. And you can see right here, hopefully you can see right here, I have a bit of redness and some freckles or dark spots. I have a few dark spots right here. These never really get covered by my foundation 100% because they are such bad spots. And then I actually do just kind of do a zip across my neck right there because that's where I have the worst part of my um, discoloration or my melasma through there. So I just go and I tap all of that in with my fingers. I'm gonna be really careful about kind of switching fingers here because I don't want too much of that on there. I'm just patting it all out. I don't wanna have a lot of extra makeup here. And that is really the point of just um, spot concealing. It just helps out so much to be able to not have all of those brown spots, all of the red, the red stuff that I don't want to break through. Around your nose is where a lot of women get a lot of hormonal breakthrough with little petechial veins in there. So I do around my nose with what is ever left on my fingers. Okay, so the star of this show is the number seven Protect and Perfect Advanced All-in-One Foundation. This it has age-defying ingredients. It says this is medium coverage and it has a sunscreen. And so up. I really believe that they're trying to dupe the um, It Cosmetics CC, Your Skin But Better CC Cream, which I absolutely love. But I really like this one too a lot, you guys. I feel like it does the same thing. I do feel like it is a pretty darn good dupe for it. So we are going to use this today and I'm just gonna squeeze some out on my hand. And we're gonna start out with one coat because that is so important, just one coat. And I'm just gonna put a couple of dots around my face. I'm gonna do one side with a brush and then I'm gonna do the other side with a beauty blender so you can see. I know a lot of you prefer to do either or. This is the Smashbox Primer Water. I like to spray my tools that I use for my foundation with some sort of a primer water because I feel like it just distributes everything a little bit better. So I'm just gonna put one, two sprays on the end of that brush. And then I'm going to do my right side here with the brush. And I'm just kind of gonna do stippling motions here. And we will see how well that covers up. And it does do such a good job, especially since I already kind of went in and did some spot concealing. It's gonna do a good job with just one coat instead of having to have multiple coats on to cover up your face. That's kind of where we can get into trouble as aging women. We can find that it's a little bit harder to cover everything. So we end up putting more on, more foundation on. And really that's not what we wanna do. We want to have as thin a coat of, as possible of foundation. Otherwise it can age us because it can end up looking really, really cakey. So I'm just going around here and I'm doing all that. And then I'm going to push that down my neck and I'm going to pick up what I had down there on my chest. And I'm just going across and I always go all the way down my decollete with my foundation. And yes, it does transfer onto my clothes, but I've been bringing my makeup down here for years. So I'm kind of used to the transfer that you do get from that. It doesn't bother me that much. Okay, the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna do the sponge. And again, I'm gonna take my primer water and I'm gonna spray the tip of that sponge really well. And then I'm gonna do this side. This sponge, by the way, was already wet. Um, damp, not wet, but it was already damp. Now you're gonna find that, on, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this that well on camera, but I can, that this does not cover as well with the sponge as it did with the brush. Um, I like the finish with the sponge, but more than likely what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have to put another coat of this on in order to cover everything on this side with the sponge. And that just happens for two reasons. One, when the sponge is already wet, it kind of, you know, shears everything out a little bit more. And two, the sponge soaks up a little bit. So that kind of happens as well. 
So I can see as I'm looking at my face right now that there needs to be just a little bit more through here, maybe a little bit more through my decollete from the sponge. Um, my nose didn't get covered that well, but I've got a lot right here that didn't get covered because of using the sponge. So on that side, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more foundation on, maybe about, well, about a quarter of what I did before. So I'm just gonna dot that on places that I feel like it didn't cover completely. And did you notice that I didn't bring that foundation all the way up my eyes? When you do your concealer in a minute, what you're gonna find is that if you had, you're gonna just create another layer up there. And that can really contribute to having really cakey under eyes as well. So I'm gonna just go in and I'm gonna pounce this or bounce this around to get this taken care of on a second coat. So to have one or two coats on your face instead of having you know, just put a bunch on there and then having to blend it out. It just seems to work better because for one, you can just put it on the places where you really need it. Like I showed on my nose and then right there on my cheeks. Now you can see how much better that's doing. And for another, um, you're gonna have more breakthrough during the day because you have a thicker coat on there. So I feel like that worked out really pretty. What I'm gonna do now though, is the side that had the brush on it, I am gonna just bounce this sponge all over just to make sure that I pick up any excess product. And I like the way that the sponge finishes, even if the actual brush does lay down more product, I do still like the way the sponge finishes. All right, so now we're gonna work on that under eye area and we're gonna do the concealing on it. Now, the um, creaseless concealer, ultimate crease creaseless concealer from Revolution Pro is a dead on dupe for the It Bye Bye Pores um, Full Coverage Anti-Aging Waterproof Concealer. These are like identical products, you guys. And the biggest thing that I want you to take away from here is that you only need a teeny tiny amount of these products. I mean, the smaller, the better, because again, we're talking about if you need extra coats, that's fine. But this stuff goes such a long ways and it's thick and it's hydrating. And so if you get too much on there, you're gonna get creasing, especially if you have deep creases like I do underneath your eyes. So this one is in C6, that's the color. And this one right here is in the light cool. So I'm going to mix these because the light cool is much, much too light. And then the C6 is just a little bit too uh, yellow for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the littlest amount I can possibly get on my finger in squeezing this out. And what's really nice is these tubes are a little bit hard to squeeze out. So can you guys see, I mean, hopefully the camera is picking that up good enough that I just barely got a tiny, tiny bit out amount amount out of both of those tubes. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna put one dot on that side and put one dot on that side. That should be enough to do everything. And I'm just gonna kind of bounce that around a little bit with my finger. I feel like the warmth of your finger will warm up the concealer. And I'm just going to go over to the other side and I'm just gonna let these set for a second. Because if I let them set for a second, what's gonna happen is they're gonna to start to mix with the warmth on my skin. And yes, I am shaky today, you guys. Please remember that I have a disability, my hands shake. I'm not nervous doing the tutorial. It's just the way things are for me, unfortunately. But I'm gonna go up here, and I'm gonna go clear under, and I'm gonna go into that corner on my eyeball because that's where we get all our darkness at. And then I'm gonna take this side down just a little bit because I didn't completely get that redness taken care of. And that is bothering me just a little bit. So I'm gonna let that set for a second and I'm not gonna mess with it for a second. And then I'm gonna go back in with my dampened beauty blender. And with the beauty blender, I'm not wetting this anymore. So this is fairly dry now. All I want to do with this at this point, and I keep trying to push my hair out. I should probably should have put my hair in a ponytail. All I'm trying to do with this Beauty Blender is I'm just trying to blur everything out very, very easily. So I'm going in with the very lightest pressure that I can and I'm starting out here on the outside and I'm gonna do this on both sides first and then I'm gonna go down here. That way I'm blending all of this area out and I'm starting that way so that I can continue to work with product and then the most product is gonna be up in here where I really need the coverage. 
you can do this with your finger if you want to. Like I said, the warmth of your finger will warm up the product, but I have found that either way works really good. You might want a tendency to look up so that you're getting every little wrinkle pressed in. The other thing that the sponge does at this point is it picks up extra product, which is really awesome. Okay, so now I'm all set. What's gonna happen is this is gonna start to crease if you're not careful with it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take some of my Seal the Deal Hydrating Setting Spray and I'm going to spray this very lightly on this tip, just very lightly, and I'm going to set my under eyes with that. And I am not touching this hardly at all. So I'm just gonna kinda just touch and roll just a little bit to get some of that setting spray on there, just ever so slightly. And I barely put any on there, so I am going to put enough to use it on the other side and just touching and rolling that a little bit. All right, so I set that. Now, what powder do I use? What do I go in next? What do I do? So what I'm gonna do, because this is another tutorial that I'm gonna do right now um, for another video, I'm gonna go off camera, I'm going to do all of my color makeup on my face, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you powder and spray and all those good things because those are the things that I do after I have done all of my blush, contour, all that good stuff. So I will see you in just a minute with a completely done face. Okay guys, so I have my face makeup done. Now, you're gonna think I'm a little bit crazy. I actually got this tip from my sister-in-law. Hi Donna, I love you. If you're watching, I got this tip from my sister-in-law and it seems to work really, really good for me as an aging woman. And that is before powder, after you've done all of your face color, your blush, your highlight, contour, all that good stuff, you put on a coat of setting mist onto your face and your decollete in order to set it before you put on your powder. So we're gonna do that. This is the Hydrating Seal the Deal from um, Flower Beauty, and I love this stuff, and I'm putting on quite a little bit, not a ton, but quite a few sprays there. My face isn't soaked, but it's wet. And if you have one of those nice electric fans, go ahead and do that. I just have a handheld one that seems to do the purpose just as good. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to fan my face until it's dry. All right, and then I'm going to take my e.l.f. Sheer Tint Finishing Powder. This one is in Fairlight. I love this powder, you guys. And I'm going to take my e.l.f. Big Powder Brush, and I'm just gonna load that powder brush up first, and then I'm gonna tap off any excess I can get off, and I'm going to go into the parts that have breakthrough a lot. I'm going to be staying away from my cheeks, um, the top of my cheeks, this area where I put all of the color. I'm gonna be staying away from there just because I feel like what happens is that the setting spray takes care of that for me. So I'm staying away from those. What I'm wanting to do in these areas where I'm putting extra powder is refine those. My pores are a little bit bigger. I have a little bit extra texture there because of being older and having a few scars and whatnot. And these areas are areas that I can get breakthrough with my hot flashes or my little power surges as I call them. And then I'm gonna go along and do my decollete to set that down and to make it look really finished and really pretty. So I'm staying away from that cheek area. I can go underneath it right down here. And I'm doing the nose. I'm not doing under the eyes as you guys kind of see. I kind of hardly ever do that underneath my eyes. I don't hardly ever set it unless it's gonna be super hot. I just set it with that setting spray. Now I'm going to take, as you're gonna think this is weird, but I'm going to take a finishing powder. So that was our setting powder. This is our finishing powder. Mine is the Lancome Absolute, and this is an Absolute Golden. And I just take my big, humongous, fluffy brush from It Cosmetics. By the way, I think this brush is gonna go on sale at Ulta for half off, and that's how I originally got mine. So check that out. I kind of loaded it up, not a ton, but again, I'm going to shake off any excess I can get. And now I'm gonna hit the high points so that my skin looks finished. I'm gonna go across my forehead, I'm gonna go across my cheeks. This is a very light touch I'm using. Down my nose, my chin, down my neck, and across my decollete. And that was just a light dusting all over of that powder. 
and that just finishes it so nicely. Lastly, I'm gonna go in with a Radiant Spray. Now this is an Algenes bottle, but there is the Radiant Setting Spray from NYX in here because that bottle was spitting at me. So I love this bottle because it doesn't do that at all. It just gives a really fine mist, and I'm just gonna really lightly spray, and that's it. That is everything I do for my complexion. Keep in mind, I realize that is a lot of steps, but when I get into my routine, I can do my entire complexion part. My eyes usually take the longest between eyebrows, mascara, and eyeshadow. They take a long time for me to do. All the rest of this stuff, 10 minutes maybe to do everything else, including all of the colors that I put on my face. Okay, so now I get to go off camera. I'm gonna do my lips and my mascara and I'll be back to talk to you. Okay guys, this is the finished look on a flawless face of foundation for older women. I'm gonna pan out just a little bit so that you guys can see this on a little bit more of a distance. So this is about how far I would be standing away from somebody if I were just talking to them on a regular basis. So you can see how well this does. You know, all the added factors in as far as the contour and everything, it does really well and it adds to the flawless foundation, but the powders and the sprays, those are all things that you need for your foundation to last a long time for it, to give that seamless blurred out effect that you get when you do your foundation. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. This is a really easy routine and you don't have to cake makeup on, but it does look like you have a very finished skin, even though you guys saw I had all kinds of spots, all kinds of redness. You have very finished skin, but it still looks very skin-like. And that's what I love about doing this foundation routine. So I hope that you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up if you did. I hope that everybody is staying happy and healthy and everything is going well for everyone. Everybody, please take care of yourselves. I love you all so very much and I'll see you all in my very next video. Take care guys, bye-bye.